The longest zucchini ever grown was 8.3 feet long or 2.5 meters. That could make a lot of dishes. So I was curious, what is a zucchini dish from your country that I should try making? Five people from five countries responded, so let's start the zucchini episode. Hey Beryl, my name is Lindsay and I am from North Carolina in the south of the United States. The dish that I want to share with you today is called zucchini pie. Zucchini pie, unlike its name sounds like, is actually a savory dish that is in pie form. Zucchini pie is a dish full of contrasts. Even though I recently came off of my high of making shoe pastry, we're doing a pre-made pie shell for this one, which I'm pretty sure I need to pre-bake. My messy unstaged kitchen on top, but pie shell. I'm a real Betty Crocker. It is full of vegetables, but also really cheesy. It is also really hearty but it's really light as well. I love using a mandolin, but I also have been severely wounded by a mandolin, like lost tips of my fingers on one, but it's worth it because there's so, I just love a uniform slice. <clears throat> Perfect. It is a family dish and it's one of our favorites. I think my mom really liked this dish because she could get us kids to eat all of our vegetables all at once together. When my mom was growing up, my grandma used to grow zucchini in her backyard. And she used to say that she would have to pick them when they were really small in the mornings, because if she waited a few hours, they would all be the size of baseball bats. When it comes to the chop wizard, it is important that you don't overload it because then it's really easy. Otherwise, it's um, embarrassing. Oh no, come on, Beryl. Easy peasy. <laughs> My mom would make this dish for us in the summertime only, and it's one of our favorite summer traditions. Zucchini pie means summer for me. As much crushed garlic as you want. She said one clove at least, so we're gonna do three cloves, because that feels right. I think everyone should try zucchini pie at least once, because just looking at the ingredient list, you don't think any of this is gonna work together, but somehow it just comes together beautifully and it really surprises you. Going in. Ugh. Bye. While my zucchini pies are in the oven, I have an ax to grind with Pillsbury's pre-made pie crusts because look at how thick and juicy and voluptuous this pie turned out here. Not only one layer of meringue, but all the curd, like the pie shells are this big. You're not getting a thick pie out of there. I couldn't fit all the zucchini in. Like, I don't really think I can get much more in here. They lied, I'm sad. Even though this dish is mostly zucchini, it doesn't seem like it because the onions, butter, and garlic complement the zucchini really well. It just surprises you. Just as I suspected. In my mind, I imagined it was gonna be like this like thick, juicy pie, but it's gonna be like, the slice is gonna be this thick. Hillsbury pie crust lied to me, first of all. <laughs> the edge can't sit up and it's thin. Look at this. Now that doesn't mean it's not gonna taste good. It just means false advertising. Uh, Pillsbury, it did me dirty. It's funny, Lindsay said that, you know, the ingredients seem like they wouldn't work well together, but to me, like, this seems perfect. Mmm. The mustard is really good. It's actually more, I mean, I smeared it on the top and the bottom. I'm like, it's more powerful than I thought. I think without the mustard, this actually might not have like so much flavor. Zucchini is not exactly the most robust of vegetables, but I really like the spicy mustard with it. And it is cheesy. I think adding a little Parmesan for a little bit of that like saltiness would be really good. Wow. I assumed when I saw zucchini pie 
that it was gonna be shredded for some reason, like a grated zucchini in some sort of mixture. When it was the half moon shapes, I really was a little bit curious about how this was gonna turn out. And I wasn't sure how thick I should be slicing it. Cause I was like, do you want like Super big thin. chunks of Thinker. zucchini in your mouth? But this isn't big chunks of zucchini in your mouth. It's very soft. It cooked down really well with all that butter and onion. This is a this is an A plus recipe. Super simple, minus the aforementioned lies by Big Pillsbury. I mean that didn't change the simplicity. It just made me mad. I ate my whole slice. I talked a lot of smack about that crust, but at the end of the day, the crust tasted good. Not as good as the filling, but it was good. Oh. Hi Beryl, hi everybody. I am Enar and I am original from Madrid. I'm currently living here with my fiance and my cat. The dish I want to talk to you about today is noquerones, a very easy and special way to prepare zucchinis. It comes from the typical way to eat anchovies here in Spain. We call them boquerones. I have to remove all the skin, so no green left behind because she said that it'll make it bitter, but like, I just, I sometimes wonder, like, would it, would it make it better? I don't know. I just think American zucchinis especially are so weak, <laughs> a weak vegetable, that um, I just question whether or not they are even capable of bitterness, but no green. It's all gonna be cleared out. But this is the vegan version of it, so there are no anchovies, they are zucchini. We call them noquerones. I have to peel it into ribbons and I have my normal peeler and then I have this peeler that I bought from my watermelon episode and it was so hard to use that I haven't touched it since, but I feel like I'm gonna try again. You will not best me, peeler. Ooh, ha ha, I got it. Ooh. They are refreshing, a little bit savory, and the special flavor of the garlic gets sense to everything. I might consider zucchini as my favorite summer vegetable, as I have so many friends and family that give me fresh zucchini from the yard. I'm pretty sure I have a cat. So dramatic in this drawer. I have a cap. <laughs> I don't know why people think that zucchini don't have a special flavor. I believe that if you leave zucchini to be the main character of the film, you can find its flavor with this a little bitter, soft, and maybe kind of sweet. Maybe the secret of this dish is the slices. Instead of big chunks, you can have as many as you want to without getting bored. So the recipe calls for parsley. I have cilantro, but um, there's no difference between the two, right? Right? Fight in the comments. I think people will enjoy these zucchini teas because it's different and it is easy and creative. I believe there are so many ways and so many uses to these teas and people will find it refreshing and very interesting for this summer. Enjoy. Considering that I kind of recently just got back from Spain, it feels kind of fitting. Oh my God. So you all need to make this immediately. While this did take a little bit of time, all of the steps were so simple. There was one full day in my fridge next to the giant pickle. <laughs> Look at it. Hello. I'm obscenely big. And then just letting it sit with the parsley and garlic and the oil afterwards for, I think I left it there for like five hours because I was doing other stuff throughout the day. This to me is like, you have a cold glass of wine, like a couple of other snacky snacks and everyone's kind of sitting around a table chatting. I mean, this is tapas, perfect tapas. I like the ribbons. Mm. I feel like maybe this is my first time ever having a pickled zucchini. It has the kind of same type of crunch that like a good pickle has. You have a good bite to it. It's not like all soft, even though it's very thin. I don't know if I really taste zucchini in this, which I guess is like not that surprising because zucchini is not necessarily the strongest taste in all of the plants. I am getting a lot of the vinegar, a lot of the garlic and the herbs and like the olive oil. It's just, 
I'm very into it. And I feel like I could eat this entire plate. I'm not sure if leaving the skin on would have made this bitter. I obviously didn't want to risk it, but I think in general, like American vegetables don't have the same trappings as European ones because our stuff is so mutated and just like has gone through the ringer of genetic manipulation. And so like, ultimately, I just think maybe the zucchinis that we get here are a bit like lower down in quality and taste and everything than zucchinis from abroad. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, I feel like we're off to a rip-roaring start here. I love a zucchini and I'm excited to see. Um, starting again because I should have just waited, but I ate in the middle, literally in the middle of talking. I'm excited to see what else we have coming up. Hello, Beryl. My name is Rose and I am from Jordan. The dish that I want to tell you about is called kusau beid, which translates literally to zucchini and eggs. Kusau beid is well known across Jordan. It's one of the breakfast stables. The dish does not require a lot of components, does not require real effort in the kitchen. The whole thing can be wiped out in 15 minutes, sometimes less. I wasn't sure what to do with this leftover zucchini center from the Spanish dish. It's going in to the Jordanian dish. Cha-ching! Kusau beid is a very good introduction to the food culture of Jordan and Palestine. This food culture is characterized by a deep appreciation of resources, and they are generally zero-waste cultures. Although this dish is humble, and probably for some people zucchini isn't that delicious and isn't that tasteful, for me the dish is about the way our family gathers around the dish. The recipe doesn't say how much of everything to use, but my gut is telling me that it's zucchini and onion forward and the eggs are there like as a binder maybe. So I'm gonna go with more veg to egg ratio. That's what my melon heart, my zucchini heart is telling me. And because my mother insists on cooking it, it feels like a blessing to me, despite it being very simple. I believe what's most important is not how we see the food as advertised by fancy dining and fancy dishes. I think we should start looking at vegetables and at food generally from the point of view of how to preserve, how to respect and how to appreciate resources. How can I best not waste resources? And that's why I believe you should give Kusal Bed a go. Please try this dish. Try it with your family, try it on a day where you don't have to go to work. You can slow down and just enjoy the food, enjoy the company, enjoy the silence. Just don't forget that you have to scoop the mixture out with a piece of flatbread. Have some well-salted slices of tomato next to it. You can even add some parsley on top of it and enjoy. I think that when I think about a scrambled egg, the last vegetable that I would ever think to put into it would be a zucchini because it doesn't add that much flavor. But I do know that with the zucchini pie, like that was a great combo. So I don't see why this would not also be a great combo. <laughs> I made my bread too small, so now my fingers are all over it, whatever. This is a great combo. I feel like I can really taste zucchini in a very good way. Wow. I also really taste the onion. Should have put it through my chopper. It's too late. Really taste the fresh herbs that I put in at the very end. All together, I am very surprised and like psyched about this zucchini egg scramble. I really love Middle Eastern breakfast because there's always different textures, there's always different flavors on your plate. And I love olives in the morning. Mm. This happens a lot when I get recipes and they're recipes that are family recipes, so they don't necessarily come with instructions. They just kind of come with vibes. And so I had to use my intuition. I think a little, a little more. It's a big onion, but, or go half. Maybe the big, no, no, this is fine. Oh, this might be, well, we'll just see how it goes. I might need to take some out. Oh, yeah, wait. I think that's the right amount of egg. I think I did this well. I really like the texture and the consistency and I feel like the ratio is right of egg to veg. Mm. 
I like that I was able to use the leftover zucchini from the dish from Spain because I was like, what am I gonna do with this like zucchini core? And then boom, here comes this perfect dish that's literally made for leftover zucchini. I love that. And it really makes me excited about the food waste episode that I have coming up, which I think is gonna be really interesting. Mm -hmm. Overall, what Rose said about like looking at an ingredient as a whole and not just as like a way to elevate it, but just to like appreciate it and have it, I feel like that is what zucchinis are made for, that type of attitude. And this dish perfectly exemplifies the idea of using the whole vegetable and using the leftover bits of the vegetable and elevating it into a flavor that is surprising but delicious and very easy to make. Hi Beryl, my name is Bar. I live in Tel Aviv, Israel, but my grandparents are Jews who migrated from Bulgaria. The dish I want to talk about is anjinara. It's a very simple and very classic Sephardic Jewish dish of zucchini peels stewed in sweet tart tomato sauce, traditionally eaten cold. I like anjinara because it's very tasty yet easy and fast to make. Eaten cold, it's very refreshing. You can also eat it warm with rice and it's comforting and unctuous. So this recipe and the Spanish recipe both talked about the seeds. I just like, maybe American zucchinis just don't really have seeds in the same way. I just feel like, is this worth it to remove the seeds? They're so, they seem so inconsequential. Okay, okay, I've de-seeded this. Like, I don't know. I'll probably just do it, but I'm questioning it. It's a dish my grandmothers used to make all the so time. Little. It's extremely common in Sephardic Jewish families, specifically from the Balkan diaspora. I guess that's not like insignificant, but all right, fine. Maybe it was a good idea. We don't use a lot of spices. It's a very simple cuisine and my family has been cooking it for generation. As a kid, I didn't like it at all. And in my family, in Bulgarian's family, you're not considered a proper, true adult until you start liking zucchini and eggplants. I'm putting on my grating glove because, ugh, as somebody who cuts their fingers all the time, kitchen safety is cool. Let's peel. Ah, yes. Another dry tomato, America strikes again. Is this too fine? It's like barely done anything. All right, hold on. Oh, it was this side. All right, I thought I, okay, wait. I thought I knew how to do this, but now I'm, do I know how to do this? What am I doing? Is this how you grate a tomato? What about the skin? What's happening? Of <laughs> course, I don't, I don't feel confident. I am confident. If I say I'm confident, then I am confident. Ah, oh, no, I'm wearing my safety gloves. Okay, we're okay. Um, yeah. And now I love it. And finally, I'm considered a proper adult. Using the peels help with the texture. The garlic and the tomato enhance the flavors and the Lemon helps maintain the freshness of the zucchini. I don't think a lot of people know about Sephardic cuisine. There aren't many ways of maintaining a heritage. You can use language and you can use cooking. Cooking anjinara, eating anjinara. It's my way of doing something my family did for centuries. And also it's a way of honoring my elders, which I think is very important because they're the reason I'm here. People should try it because it's just plain good. The Teavon, as we say in Hebrew. Thank you for everything. This dish made my kitchen smell, even though it's technically a Jewish Bulgarian dish, like an Italian kitchen, like the tomatoes and the garlic and the zucchini. Uh, I love that it's room temp served with hot rice. My favorite, like hot cold combo. I guess not cold, but hot room temp combo. Wow. Even though I was hemming and hawing about having to remove the seeds from this, I don't know. Maybe just like a light de-seeding. I was like, this seems silly. This dish turned out magically. I love that. What Bar said really does hold true. Like this dish is simple. There's not like a lot of technique going on. There's like no spices in here. 
But at the same time, everything feels very composed. And like the whole dish feels very comforting, I guess. And usually like zucchini, tomato, and garlic are, they're part of like the supporting cast of a dish, right? But here they're kind of front facing and I I think that they're standing on their own. That's a lot of theater metaphor. <laughs> These are vegetables that are often relegated to the background and here they're on full display and like it's it's great. You don't miss the meat. <laughs> As I say to my brother-in-law every time I make him a vegetarian dish. And he always says, no barrel, the vegetables are good. As far as ease of cooking, this definitely feels like if you're looking to get into bulk in cooking, this one is a very low entry point and it uses ingredients that are super common. And I think if you're somebody who loves vegetables, this is a dish where vegetables shine and it's like, not to go back to the theater metaphor, but this is a show starring the zucchini. <laughs> and everybody should go see it. That was a lame ending, but I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> Hi Beryl! My name's Rosita. And my name's Vita and we are a mother and a daughter from Suffolk in East Anglia in the United Kingdom. But originally our family comes from a region in southern Italy called Campania. The dish we want to talk to you about today is scabesh, which is a pickle made in the south of Italy. There isn't a direct translation for the name, but we think that it actually comes from the Spanish escabesh, which refers to a pickle made using vinegar. Scabesh is a fresh pickle that's ready to eat within a couple of hours, but you can keep it for much longer. It's made with sliced zucchini that's been fried and then it has this delicious marinade of olive oil, vinegar, mint and garlic. If you have leftover mint stems, here's a fun thing to do. When I used to work at a Jamaican restaurant, we would put this inside the simple syrup liquid to infuse it with the flavor of mint and we would make mojitos with it and it's a really good way to use the stems. Less food waste. We're gonna try a chiffonade. Ah, oh, it's not really rolling. Just kidding, we're just dropping it, okay. That is not a chiffonade. <laughs> oh, it kind of is. All right, doesn't matter. It's chopped mint. And then just before you eat it, you put a little bit of salt onto it rather than before you cook it. That way the zucchini keeps its texture and its shape. I'm really excited to use this olive oil. My super made this olive oil in our basement. And you might think like, that's weird. Basement, New York City olive oil. It's really good. So homemade basement olive oil from my super. <laughs> The mint and the garlic make the scabesh instantly aromatic. Nice color. And when you eat it, the outside of the zucchini has a sweet caramelization and that balances really nicely with that slightly bitter interior of zucchini. You eat scabesh at room temperature, so you get the full perfume and that deliciousness of it. I feel like I'm always facing a dilemma between two things. Uh, the skinny one or the thicker one I, I would think skinny because you want them to fry up and be crispy. Oh, that is tiny. But then I think thick because it's gonna sit with the dressing. Hmm. We're gonna go with this one. From my understanding of scabesh, there is a history of it in Rome, but it's much more recognized as a dish from the South because it's a poor man's dish. I should be wearing my gloves. It was fine. Zucchini grow really abundantly, really plentifully, really easily in the south. It was a treat for us growing up in rural Suffolk because it's something nobody else ate. First, I just fry it. Okay, I'm just gonna fry it. I'm scared. I'm gonna put it in like this. I'm brave! <laughs> so my dad would grow the zucchini and my mum would cook it and it would be the very first very tiny zucchini that she would use. So then obviously when my children were born, I wanted them to enjoy scabesh as well. So they would help get the zucchini in and then they'd help sort of cut them up in their own way. Just, it was a lovely thing to do and eat together. For me, I think that scabesh connects me to my grandparents. My nonno used to grow so many different fruits and vegetables and I have a lot of memories of him proudly showing off the different things that he'd grown on the lunch table. 
My nonno passed away during the first wave of the COVID pandemic and I regularly now visit my nonna with homegrown zucchini and I'll make her small batches of scabesh for her to have over the next couple of days. She is always overjoyed to see the zucchini that I bring, how many I bring and how big they are and she's also overjoyed for me to get cooking. My nonno was the most amazing vegetable gardener and I admire how he cared for his plants and how enthusiastic he was to make food out of the things that he'd grown. I see that same passion in my mum and I think scabesh perfectly embodies that because it's a food we've passed down from one generation to the next. It's interesting that this dish was described as a pickle because I don't think about a pickled dish as something that you would fry. I think about the Spanish dish as a pickle, not this. So it's making me think differently about what a pickle is. I also did a whole video on pickles. Shameless self-plug. Watch that one if you like pickles. <laughs> also, you might notice my cool Billy Joel shirt. Uh, I just saw Billy Joel in concert. <laughs> Obviously this has nothing to do with the dish. I was just really excited that I saw Billy Joel in concert because I love him. I guess I'm just gonna eat it like with a spoon. I don't know. Whoa, it's got that flavor of pickliness that you'd expect from the vinegar and the garlic, but then because the zucchini was fried, there's like this kind of interesting cooked crunchiness. I think that the mint is glorious and the garlic together with it, like, Wow, that's yummy. It's very different. I like the little zucchinis as well. They taste kind of the same. They're just tinier, you know? I was definitely a little bit nervous in doing some of the frying. I'm used to the safety of my deep fryer. Wow, look at me being so brave not using my deep fryer. I said it was brave, I'm scared. Okay, round two. Frying can be scary, but this is, this is a controlled fry. No, I'm brave, I'm good. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so scared of everything. The other thing that made this dish special is the olive oil that the super of my building made <laughs> for me and probably some other people in the building actually, but not my neighbors. Because when I told them about it, they were like, we didn't get olive oil. Hmm. It's a weird thing, but it's a cool thing. <laughs> I thought that this episode about zucchini has been wonderful, especially because like when zucchini grows, it grows and we all need tons of recipes to get through it for the season. I hope that some of these inspired you. All of the recipes are in the description. I will see you all in my next video.